Hello everybody, my name is Josh Hardcastle, and in this video I'll be building a workbench for my stepdad for Father's Day. The bench already has a spot in the garage which is below a window with a windowsill which is 36 and a quarter inches from the ground. My stepdad also wanted to be able to slide his toolbox under the workbench on one side. The toolbox is 34 inches tall so determining the height of the workbench was pretty simple at about 36 inches tall. Let's get started. As with most woodworking projects that I do, I do all my cutting at once. I almost always have plans and a cut list before I start building. Now I had my lumber cut down to manageable lengths from Home Depot, but I always have them cut it slightly longer than I need just so I can be sure that I'm the one cutting them to the correct length. Here I am just marking all my cuts that I'll need to make on the miter saw. I built the whole workbench out of two 10 foot 4x4s, four 8 foot 2x4s, and one 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch maple plywood. I have a small single car garage so I do most of my woodworking in the driveway. Because of this, and the fact that I live in Fresno, California, where this particular day was 97 degrees outside, you'll see me chasing shade throughout the entire video. I realized how bad of an idea that was for viewers' sake during editing. Sorry for that in advance. I'm just cutting everything down to their final length and stacking them by size for the time being. I don't have the absolute best tools, but everything I have gets the job done, except for when cutting 4x4s on my miter saw. The design of this miter saw obviously wasn't meant for cutting 4x4s. The saw blade gets about 99% of the way through the 4x4 before the motor hits the wood and won't cut any further, leaving about a half an inch of the wood uncut. However frustrating it may be, it is a simple fix with a flush trim saw. Just a couple pulls and it's fixed. After laying everything out for the section I'm working on, I grab this triangle screw template. This is just to ensure that your screws never run into each other when working on corners. You set it on a piece you need to drill with a single hole of the triangle facing either left or right. When you work on the other side of the corner, make sure the template is aligned so that the screws won't hit the screws that are already in the wood. I learned this years ago when I built my first workbench, and I wish I could remember what video I saw it on. If I find it, I'll add a description. They were able to describe it way better than I am. Now I'm just using Doug Fir Lumber for the base of this because it's strong and cheap and well it's a workbench. It's not meant to be the prettiest thing. However, I did decide to go with the maple plywood because it wasn't that much more expensive, it's much more durable, and it looks so much nicer. This is the part where I realize about how bad the filming looks with the shadows, so bear with me if you will. Now you will start seeing some parts that I skipped here and there, and that's partially because I had to cut quite a bit of footage to make a somewhat short video, and because this is about the peak heat of the day and I may or may not have forgotten to hit the record button once or twice. When building a workbench, or any table for that matter, you really want to make sure that everything is square, or you'll end up with some sort of wobble somewhere. You'll see me grab the square after about every step, sometimes even after every single screw. The supports on the bottom of the shelf of the workbench is 8 inches off the ground, so I just cut some scrap 2x4 to 8 inches and use those as reference for height. They aren't actually going to be part of the workbench, so you'll see me using them multiple times. Here's one on the bottom just to keep the frame from tipping over while I secure the 4x4 leg. Still using the triangle template, I'm drilling, then countersinking, then driving the screws in. I just like the clean look it gives with the screws being flush with or just below the wood surface. When working by yourself, clamps will always be your best friend, giving you an extra hand or two when you need. Plus there are only a couple of bucks, $1.99, $2.99, something like that at Harbor Freight.
My mom and stepdad wanted the workbench seven feet long, so I designed it in two pieces so that I could transport it in my SUV. These two back 2x4s are all that connects the two main pieces of the workbench. And sorry, this is another really bad shot with the shadow. I'm actually over on the left of the screen working on the table, but you can barely see me. So I'm just using a cutoff from the plywood for the lower shelf on the right side. First I needed to cut it to length. All you need here is any straight edge and some clamps to run the circular saw along. Then I wanted it to almost wrap around the 4x4 leg so you can utilize as much space as possible so I needed to cut 5 inch squares off both sides of one of the ends of the plywood. I just used a jigsaw to make these cuts and sanded it down to reduce splinters. Now I'm at my parents' house putting the two sections back together. Since everything had been assembled beforehand at my house, it all went together really fast. I hadn't put the shelf in before taking it to my parents, so it was about a half an inch too long. I had to trim it down with my stepdad's dull beyond explanation circular saw. Fortunately, my mom had a yardstick laying around, and my brother had some just strong enough clamps to make a straight edge to cut along. After fitting the shelf into place, all that's left to do is drill, countersink, and drive screws in. My brother was filming so we were joking around and trying to make trick shots with the quick release bits in my driver. All in all, I think it turned out really nice. My stepdad loves it, the workbench fits under the windowsill, the toolbox fits under the workbench, and I had fun building something that will hopefully be used for years. <laughs>